Good morning. Okay, we have quite a few announcements today. Um, just as a heads up, if you get on your calendar again, December 4th is our congregational meeting. It will be held here in the sanctuary immediately following the service uh, for the purpose of approving the budget and the nomination and election of officers. Due to the holiday schedule, the next Friday Cafe will be December 9th, correct? Um, and it will be the last one for this year because of the way Christmas falls as well. Uh, there's a session meeting after worship today, and then we are inviting you to attend the Presbytery meeting via Zoom uh, for the certification of Pam as a ruling elder uh, eligible for commissioning to service. And then Pam and I will both be commissioned Presbytery-wide for service so that we can uh, serve the needs of the Presbytery when I move on from here. Uh, we will do that in the Friday Cafe, as I say, via Zoom. And then after we close off of that, we probably won't stay on for the entire Presbytery meeting but we will have uh, cookies and punch and would love to have some of you attend. The meeting actually begins at 3.30. We're gonna log in about three o'clock. So if you'd like to come down a little bit early, um, we'll have some cookies and punch and uh, just so you can visit with each other and on this cold chilly day. Uh, announcement wise, we have also uh, Austin has a birthday on the 23rd, so happy birthday this week, Austin. And also, I hear that Hunter, Haley Sanchez's little nephew, turned one year old over the weekend. So we want to wish a happy big birthday one to him. Uh, and of course, Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. I hope everybody has you know, plans to enjoy that day. However, it's good for them, even if that's just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> uh, enjoy that holiday. And give thanks to God in whatever you do. Uh, let's see. Also keep on your purview the um, event on December 3rd that Saturday for the Christmas walk, and from three to six, we're having a card-making event down in the Friday Cafe, so uh, it's gonna be a, a busy time for us coming up. Next week starts Advent, and I'll be asking people to volunteer to light our candles and do our readings, so if you want to participate in that, please let me know. I'll be looking for somebody for next week, um, and each of the four weeks after. Our, oh, I'll bet Matilda's gonna light candles for us. Are there any other, oh, uh, the, the snacks out here are from uh, MME, Membership Mission and Evangelism. They're for you to enjoy, so please pick up a snack bag. Uh, also, there is a thank you note out there from the uh, dog shelter, from the dog shelter, thanking us for our donations uh, during our pet blessing month. So, I think that we can, as Matilda lights our candles, and thank you for that, Matilda. Um, we can begin our worship service with our call to worship as she lights the candles. If you would please rise and join in. Oh, I'm sorry, did, Susan, did you have any final announcement or? Okay. All right. 
great. She's doing fine. You look like you're on pins and needles. <laughs> All right, let's, let's call ourselves into worship with our call to worship. God established the world. God's reign never ends. God delivered us in freedom and truth. God's love is everlasting. Christ came into the world to bear the truth and to reconcile all who hear and understand the truth of God's redeeming and everlasting love. King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ is calling us into worship and praise on this, the Lord's Day. With glad and grateful hearts, praise the Lord. Let us worship God with our opening hymn number 159. Should be a familiar tune, I believe. You may be seated. Please join with me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, how often we trust in the promises of earthly rulers instead of the power of your love. Help us to turn our hearts toward you our truth too often lies in what our eyes see and not what our hearts know. Powerful voices drown out what we know we must do to be followers of Christ. Restore us in your love and set us free to forgive as we have been forgiven by the grace and mercy of Christ. Amen. God hears our prayers when we repent and forgives our weakness. 
Jesus walked in our shoes and felt our pain, such pain that he died on our behalf. It is through his grace and sacrifice that we are free and forgiven. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city and shall not be moved. God will help when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, so that you may have all endurance and patience, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This ends the reading of God's holy word. Thank you, Pam. Well, I don't know, Matilda, do you want to come and help me do the gesture of peace today or not? That's entirely up to you. Then I think what we'll do, there are not a whole lot of us, um, let us go and pass the peace with one another uh, through a handshake or a nod, whichever you're the most comfortable with. Yeah, mix it up. Come on, mix it up. Peace of Christ, Pam.
Well, that was a lovely holiday medley. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> All right. We do come to the time in our service when we share our joys and concerns. Uh, Lisa, how's Becky doing? Okay. All right. We'll continue to keep Becky in prayer. Anything new on Amy? Okay. Uh, how's Rick? Still patient? Okay. <laughs> so now you have to keep him from jumping ahead, I'll bet. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to hear. And of course, we did have our birthdays upcoming. We want to certainly, uh, Gunner is his name. I said Hunter, but I meant Gunner, right? Yeah. Gunner's first birthday. Uh, Jolie's a little under the weather. That's why the walls aren't here today. We get those kids in school, and now they just pick up everything. <laughs> so, um, are there any other prayer concerns? Everybody doing pretty well? Um, other joys? Yes. I'm cooking a turkey. <laughs> You're what? I'm five years. You're cooking a turkey? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, is this, is this a prayer concern or is this a joy? <laughs> well, first time, how many of you put a turkey in a bag? I do. Well, you just put it in the rapid bake method. <laughs> well, good luck with your turkey. Thank you. I'm excited. I swear by the cooking bag. <laughs> All right, other joys. Okay. Certainly, we have the joy coming up this afternoon, and I do hope that, that we're, is, is there a food for thought insert in your bulletins? Because I didn't have one in mind. Was there a, an invitation on the flip side? Okay, on the back side of your food for thought, you have an invitation to this afternoon's event. It's a purple that Pam put together, that's it. So. Uh, please join us for that joyous occasion. We made cookies. So. Uh, all right. Then with all of those being said, Lynn is going to play an instrumental hymn for us. Uh, I, don't, I forgot. I, I know you asked me what I wanted you to play, but she's playing a song for me. <laughs>
Thank you, Lynn. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, our God, we celebrate the wondrous love that is ours through Jesus the Christ. The wondrous love that was in those days in the form of a small baby grew to be a man who in his divinity saved us from every sin and evil through his death and resurrection. We are so blessed by people in our lives that we love and care for. And even as we sometimes have prayers that heal, we might not know what healing is best for one another. But God, you always know. You are always there, you always hear our prayers, and you always answer. As however the case need be. Today we continue to lift up Amy and her search and her struggle for finding a donor, all of the things that have to be jumped through and testing that needs to be done. We ask for your special care for Becky as she still searches for answers and we hope that the wisdom of her physicians will find the best approach, the best method for healing her. We thank you for the healing for Rick as he excels. And we continue to pray for patience for his recovery. Lord, today we come into the week when we will celebrate Thanksgiving. And we give thanks for our children and for our elderly, for our parents and our brothers and sisters everywhere. Siblings in Christ, wherever they may be found. We ask that your love be showered over all who are in need. Those who are cold can be warmed. Those who are hungry will be fed. Speak to our hearts as we go our various ways and engage people all over. And Lord, while Jesus was here, he taught us to pray simply and humbly the prayer that we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 to 43. May God add meaning to the hearing of his holy word. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, 
one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence for condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we celebrate today Christ the King Sunday, We close out the season of Luke's telling the life and times of Jesus. The crucifixion seems like a very sad way to close out the year and then to begin Advent next week. But through our continuous renewal of the ministry, then as told by Matthew, yet another take on the events that happened, we begin again by having this resurgence of God's truth, living in the world one more year, in a constantly renewing cycle that we have for our three years of lectionary reading. In our Bible study, we've been reading scriptures that have not necessarily been read as part of our normal Sunday worship. But these texts and the ways that Luke kind of closes his gospel, and then we begin with Matthew, remind us that while we celebrate Jesus in the Advent as a baby, we celebrate rebirth and the hope for Jesus to come to us again in whatever form will be necessary. Whatever form will be necessary to have us hear the way the people of old heard a male Jewish man. And today, as the journey to the cross, that defining moment that we call Christ the King Sunday, that journey culminates at Golgotha, called the Skull, a place of much death, place of much sadness. And as this time culminates for Jesus, by then, Jesus had been labeled many things by his enemies. And he had many enemies as well as followers. Among those labels that they put on him were liar, traitor, heretic. He was a danger to the faith, as they saw it, and to the crowns of powerful earthly men. 
And he was certainly a bringer of theological questions of the role of God in the lives of humanity. He was bringing a whole different take on God's role. He was an upstart troublemaker, to say the very least. And one who needed to be put to death by the leaders of his own faith because of his ability to lead the people astray into this new way of thinking he was bringing. This new way of looking at God and looking at the law. And to those who were enemies, there was gloating. There was taunting. And yes, there was celebration on this hill of death. But for those who believed in Jesus, who believed he was bringing God in a new way, who wanted change, he walked to the cross as a restorer of hope that had been internalized in their lives. He brought the God of love as something that was not politically motivated or economically prescriptive. And he did call people to a new way to live God and neighbor through the commandments already given to Moses and as it was told by the true prophets. For them, for the believers, there was a profound sadness. The hearts of the disciples were heavy. That this could have happened to so kind a man and at the hands of their own people. And so he was nailed to a cross with a criminal on each side and a sign over his head. And these criminals were each of a different mind. Not so unlike the people that he had served his entire life a ministry of three years. Not unlike those who stood in witness from the ground at Golgotha. A man of truth, of justice, of equality among people, yet a feared and dangerous criminal to his doubters and unbelievers. A man at once mourned by some, as lots were cast for his clothing by others, for the very clothing that many of his disciples believed they had only to touch in order to be healed. And so Jesus was beaten. He was ridiculed. He was nailed to a cross with a criminal on each side, Jesus the Christ, the King. Hung and died in sort of a perfect representation of the world in which he had lived. One truly the one truly innocent man who hung there with criminals as he clung to his last moments of human life. Sadly, or maybe gladly, we know that he would have sat at the table and broke bread with either one of these criminals. 
He may even have done that somewhere along his journey. With so many lives that he touched, it is possible. He may even have washed their feet and lovingly dried them or passed the peace of Christ with them equally without judgment. But while both were convicted criminals in the eyes of man, one ridiculed God, the Lord, and one was saved by the truth of repentance. If we look closely, both had heard the message of Jesus. They were not ignorant. They had heard about his ministry. They had heard about his miracles. They had heard his message of reconciliation and healing. And both knew all of that. Just as the believers and the unbelievers on the ground below did. I will reread. One of the criminals who hanged there kept deriding him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? They both knew Jesus' story. They both had heard. But one said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. One was repentant. One criticized. But both knew who Jesus was. They knew the power that they died alongside. So on this day, we see with clarity the incredible sacrifice that God with us suffered so that every sin may be erased through repentance, through confession. And by turning away from those that keep our eyes of the things that keep our eyes away from God is, is sin is something that keeps you from God. Right side or left side doesn't make a bit of difference. As long as you are walking alongside with Jesus. In a few minutes, we will partake of the meal at the Lord's table. We will remember that Jesus did not cherry-pick who could join. Every person of every age who wishes to come is welcomed as we celebrate God's love given through living and the saving truth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now if the ushers will bring forth our offering. Lord, we thank you for your presence, 
for your life-giving truth. You have blessed us in many ways through times and talents and treasures and all of those are shared with the church in various ways. And for these offerings, these tithes that we bring back and put in the plate, use them, multiply them, build your church Let all know that Jesus was the truth, the life-saving truth for all of us. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Jesus calls all people to sit at the table with him. The sick and the uncertain, the weak and the poor, the Pharisees and the tax collectors. From north and south and east and west, he calls us to come and sit at this table. The foretaste of the kingdom of God. On a night long ago, when Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, He thought they were the hosts, and he was the guest. But then he broke the bread, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. The guest became the host at this table of wisdom. And he calls us again each time we come to celebrate this meal in remembrance of his life and death and resurrection. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the beginning of time, your wisdom danced through creation, calling forth light and life. Through wisdom, you formed us in your image, calling us to love and serve you. Foolishly, we turned from you and abandoned your ways of justice and mercy. Yet you did not reject us but continue to call us and claim us as your own. We were slaves in Egypt and you freed us. We were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness and you nourished us with manna and water from the rock. We had no home and you led us into the land of your promise. At last you emptied yourself of power and came to us as a child of Mary, holy God in frail and human flesh, and we praise you. In his life, he called unlikely people to follow him. Fisher folk, tax collectors, children, sinners, deniers, betrayers. On the cross, he gave himself up to the powers of this world to save this wayward world from the powers of death itself. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With Isaiah the prophet, we give thanks for the promise of your heavenly banquet, a feast of rich food and well-aged wine, for the strength of your steadfast love, destroying the shroud of sin and shame, for the gift of your saving grace, our long-awaited day of deliverance. We rejoice in you singing with the saints of every age. With Mary and Martha, we remember Jesus his liberating word and healing touch, his saving death and life-giving resurrection, his promised return and glorious realm. Amen. With thanksgiving, we remember how Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat this bread, do so in remembrance of me. We remember how also he took the cup and he blessed it and he poured it 
and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Every time you take of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. For the time will I will come again to sit with you at the table. As often as we share this bread and cup, we proclaim the saving death of the living Lord until he comes in glory to reign. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The table awaits you. This is the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Let us give thanks. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory through Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, and in communion with the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, our closing hymn is... Number 39, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
God is not in a far and distant place removed from you. Instead, God lives within you as you follow the teachings of Christ with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord.